Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to be turning a ring box using the uh, Niles uh, threaded inserts. Um, this one's just a little small one. I know the board at the moment looks uh, quite big for a ring box but I am going to uh, chop it down and cut it in half and just use what I need. Uh, so at the moment I'm just trying to get that into some uh, sort of round. I'm going to be putting um, two tenons, one on the bottom and when I uh, put it in half I will put another one on the other side just like that. And now I'm just parting it off in the middle. Oh it's close to the middle is what I, uh, what I wanted anyway. Now I'm just going to square up uh, the front edge, ready to uh, mark out for the uh, fitted insert. So there's my uh, no go line, and to be honest, uh, on this first one, um, oops, I went a bit too far, so I, uh, I did have to do that one again. It was a little bit slack the first time round as, um, as I inserted it in and I wasn't quite happy with it so I did um, flatten it off and start again which uh, this is what you're seeing now. Did also notice on that uh, cut that uh, that um, that cutter was getting a little blunt, so I flipped it round and all was good. And there you go. You can see that the, uh, the insert fits a lot snugger on that one. I know you couldn't see the other one, but trust me, it was too big. In fact, on this one, as you can see now, I'm just having to wind the uh, other bit in just to pull it out and put it in again just to make sure all good. So now I'm hollowing out um, a little bit of the uh, of the bottom and now because I've actually trimmed it down I can't do what I originally wanted to do and have it a little bit more um, deeper in there but you live and learn and this is the uh, number one hollower mid-size. I started sanding at 120, I went all the way up to 400 and I'm only sanding that, um, that face at the moment and a little bit on the inside because what I am going to do is once I've done both of these pieces I am going to put them together and then remount them on the lathe so I can get the shape that I want so it's all uniform. This is the next piece, and again, now I've moved that cut around, that's a, that's a lot better. This is the rougher, the easy wood rougher. There we go, nice and flat. And this detail, uh, this detail tool is absolutely phenomenal. Now back to the uh, to the rougher, just to uh, get to the depth that our, um, I'm going to need. Now just mixing up some two-part epoxy so I can set the threaded inserts inside. I think I mixed up a little bit too much here, but hey ho. There you go, that pops in nice and fluff. In fact, it's a little bit below the uh, the top of the wood. Still, 
and that's in there too. So, five minute epoxy, I actually left this for, oh, uh, probably a good four hours before um, closing it back together and um, putting it back on the lathe. So now with the uh, mid-size number one hollower, I'm just getting this to a shape that I, uh, I like. Um, I am now going to put a little cut in there and with the easy wood parting tool I'm just creating a little bit of a channel because there we go I wanted to add a bit of an accent piece onto this just making some light cuts there So now you might be able to see it's a little bit uh, wobbly on the top. So what I've done is I've put some um, painter's tape, decorator's tape. Um, so I don't want to get any of the um, sanding sealer or any of the uh, paint in there. And I also put it flush all the way across both sides in the middle of the, uh, in the, middle of the piece. As you can see, I've also taped up my... Uh, my chuck as well. I did not want to get that paint on that chuck. So that's uh, that's chestnuts uh, ebonising lacquer. I did two coats, one forward, one reverse. And now I'm just adding some Joe Sonia's iridescent paints. Just, well, I'd say random, but looking at this now, I don't think it was quite as random as what I was hoping for. That's the gold, and this is the turquoise. And I get my hairbrush. Nothing in the air, but just using the air to um, to spread the paint about, mix it together. Oop, got a bit trigger happy there with that one. It flew off. finishing off the bottom now. Now what I will say um, is when I added the band, it doesn't show me adding the band, but when I did, um, I used double sided sticky tape because I had a silver band that I put in it and I wasn't 100% sure if I'm going to be happy with that, uh, with the silver or whether I wanted a gold or a rose gold, but I only had the silver on hand at the time. So I thought if I just use double sided sticky tape, which to be fair works really well, um, I wouldn't know the longevity on it but uh, for, for the uh, purpose of this it worked out really well and I've still not made up my mind whether I want to keep it that way or use a different colour but now I have the option to uh, take it off and remount a different colour if I want to a little bit further down the line. Will 
Now I'm just using some Hansa Sheen uh, professional gloss lacquer. Uh, you'll see me do one coat on here, uh, but I actually did um, three coats, let it set overnight, did a fourth coat, and then uh, cut it back with some uh, Yorkshire Grip Microfine. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And uh, if you don't mind, please leave a comment, hit that like button, and uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe. See you next time.